Good evening. Welcome to the National News Broadcast. I'm Kasani Balachandran. A very good evening to you. I am Dishan Virakon and here are your headlines for tonight. The President says that the benefits of the UMA a multi-purpose project has been received by the people. Prime Minister says that the present government carried out massive development in the country during the past few years. Sajid Premadasa pledges to increase salaries of government employees by 107% during his tenure as well. Postal voting begins tomorrow. The Kandy Teaching Hospital is named as the second national hospital in this country. British political parties prepare to face a sudden general election. Moving on to those and other stories in detail. Several development projects of the Uma Oya multi-purpose project were vested in the public today by President Maitri Pala Sirisena. Work on the Puhul Polar Reservoir, which has been totally completed, comprises of a 35-meter tall roller pressure concrete dam built across the Uma Oya at Puhul Polar. The inauguration of diverting water from the reservoir to the Biaranda Reservoir was carried out today. President Maitri Pala Sirisena also observed the construction of the underground hydropower plant at Karandagulla. 120 megawatts of power is due to be produced through this. Work on this will be completed next year. The main objective of the Uma Oya multipurpose project is diverting 45 million cubic litres to the Kirindiwe Basin in the southern zone from the Uma Oya Basin. Water will be supplied to 4,500 hectares of land in the Divisional Secretariat Divisions of Vallavaya and Tanamalvilla through this. It is also expected to add 290 gigawatts to the national grid. 96 tanks in the area will be nourished through irrigation water. A sum of more than 160,000 rupees has been invested in this project by the government of Iran and Sri Lanka. The president said on this occasion that although this project commenced in the year 2011, it was the present government which had to face all challenges and obstructions when implementing it. He thanked the people of Uwa who dedicated themselves to contribute rather to contribute in this project to the nation in the face of obstructions. The president said that from the top level engineer to the lowest final worker to the entire staff of Iran and the local staff, we would like to commend and thank them. This is a historic task. He said the strength received from this is excellent. Declaring this opening today means handing it over to the nation. Many obstructions have been overcome by today. The Handapanagala Reservoir, which was built by increasing the capacity of the Handapanagala tank from 6.5 million cubic meters to 14 million cubic meters, was also vested with the public today. The President also participated in the inaugural water release from the Alikota Ara Reservoir of 6.5 million cubic meters capacity, which was built across Alikota Ara, which is a tributary of the Kirindi Oil. Now, a media briefing to raise awareness about the development projects which were carried out during the past several years by the present government was held today at Temple Trees under the patronage of Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe said on this occasion that 93,726 rural development projects were carried out by the present government. Under this, 386,000 housing loans have been given. Under the Close to School Best School project, which was implemented with the objective of ensuring education for all, 9,063 schools were developed. Under the Suraksha Students Insurance, the number of obtained benefits was 73,850. The government handed out nutrition sacks to 274,511 pregnant mothers. Commencing the Suasaria Ambulance Service, 297 ambulances have provided services to 274,544 patients. 
the Prime Minister said. Prices of approximately 1,000 medications, including 48 essential drugs, were minimized in the year 2014. The price of stents for heart patients was 350,000 rupees, and by today it has been reduced to 150,000 rupees. The opportunity to obtain this service free of charge from government hospitals have been provided. The number of cancer hospitals were increased to six, and 66 dialysis centers were established. The number who had piped water f- uh, f- facilities rather in 2014 was increased to 2,421,218. In comparison with past years, the number of students recruited annually for higher education was increased by 28%. 9,850 s- rather religious centers were renovated and a sum of 4,864 uh, million was spent on these. In 2014, the income earned from tourism in the country was 2,431 US dollars and by 2018 it was increased to 4,380 US dollars. Tourist arrivals which were 1,527,153 increased by 2018 to 2,333,796. Under the Gampelia program, 150,219 projects were declared open. The sum invested in this was 44,729 million rupees. Prime Minister Rani Vikram Singh has said that they took over a country where loans could not be paid off. He said all development work was carried out and salaries were increased. He said he is proud about that and would like to thank everyone connected with development. A group including parliamentarians and ministers as well as various professions were present on this occasion. The presidential candidate of the New Democratic Front, Sajid Premadasa, said that similar to the present government increasing salaries by 107% of government employees, he will also carry out a salary increase of 107% during his tenure of administration for all government workers. He expressed these views at a rally held today at the Madhavatriya city in the district of Anuradhapura. Sajid Premadasa received a warm welcome from area residents when he arrived to participate in the rally. Presidential candidate of the New Democratic Front, Sajid Premadasa, questioned whether the people remember the era when government employees were harassed and influenced and made to kneel. He said he will develop the country and increase salaries and said he was dedicated to creating a great government service. He said he would like to tell the members of the tri forces who cleaned roadways, worked for leaders, bait dogs, that such an era will never come back. He said he will provide a life of pride to war heroes. He further said that a national program will be implemented for the overall war heroes community. Subsequently, Sajid Premadas participated in a rally held at the Kinia Municipal Council Stadium in the Trincomalee District. Sajid Premadas also participated in a rally held at the Dambulla Gamudava Stadium. Another rally to ensure the victory of Sajid Premadasa was held in the Minuangula town today. Prime Minister Rani Vikramasinghe also participated. Minuangula electorate organizer of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, Ruan Ranatunga, joins Sajid Premadasa to support him. 
Now, postal voting of the presidential election will be held tomorrow and day after. Chairman of the Election Commission, Mahinda Desha Prey, informed the media about how voters should use their franchise. This was at the Election Commission office situated in Rajagiri. Chairman of the Election Commission, Mahinda Desha Priya, said that the vote should be denoted by writing number one inside the box in front of the preferred candidate. This is mentioned in the Presidential Election Act. Additionally, the voter can add their second and third votes for one or two other candidates if they prefer. To add these votes, the voter should write number two in front of their second preferred candidate's name and number three in front of the third preferred candidate. On this occasion, nothing more than the numbers one, two and three or a symbol should not be marked. If only a vote for one candidate is given, the number one can be marked. If a voter has marked his vote with a traditional X, the relevant ballot paper too would be considered a valid vote. The presidential candidate of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna Gotabe Rajapaksa said that he has prepared a series of policies centered on people. He expressed these views at a rally held in Batiklo yesterday. The presidential candidate of the Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna, Gotabe Rajapaksa, said that his election manifesto is centered on people. He said they have presented policies for drinking water projects to improve health services as well as education and the living standards of rural people. He said he is asking people of these areas to trust in him regarding security, improvement and development. He also said that he carried out all responsibilities properly. He said that he will fulfill promises made today in the same way. ಪ್ರತಿಪಾದಿಸಿಟಿಂಗ್ <laughs> Another rally was organized in Nampari yesterday by the Sri Lanka Kodijana Karamuna. The presidential candidate of the Sri Lanka Kodijana Karamuna, Gotabe Rajapaksa, said the priority has been given to agriculture in the election manifesto. He also said that a decision has been made to cut off farmers' loans. He said that he proposes to introduce technology so that they will be able to earn a bigger income at a lesser cost. Now, the presidential candidate of the Jatika Janabala campaign, Anurag Kumar Nayaka, said that if a country is to be developed, supremacy of the law and justice should be established. He said that he is ready to implement it to the, let to the letter in this country. Anurag Kumar Nayaka expressed these views at a rally held in Pol Polo Narwa yesterday. The presidential candidate of the Jatika Janabala campaign, Anurag Kumar Nayaka, said that how many times have people gone behind leaders hoping that this country would be built. During all of those times, what happened was that hopes were dashed. These rulers have not been able to be changed. Then he said that at least as the people, they have to change. If an administration that could build the country is to be set up, he requested people to give them the power in this country. No country where the law was not followed has ever developed. He said he certifies that he will carry out that task properly. ಸಾಧಾರಣ <laughs> Another rally organized by the Jatika Janabal campaign was held in Kinnia yesterday. Presidential candidate of the Democratic United Nation Front Aryavan Shadizanaika launched his election manifesto today. 
The election manifesto was first presented to the Anunayaka of the Malvata chapter, Most Venerable Nian Godavijita Siratero. Subsequently, it was presented to Anunayaka of the Askiriya chapter, Venerable Anamadwe Dhammade Siratero. Presidential candidate of the Socialist Equality Party, Vajrapani Vijayasiri Vardhana, also launched his party's election manifesto today. This was at the NM Pereira Centre at Purala. Now, Minister Ranjit Madhu Vandara said that steps have been taken even as of now to face disaster situations which could be faced due to the inclement weather. Now, schools in the Hammantara district and Matara Mulutiyan education zones will remain closed tomorrow as well. People's lives were obstructed in certain areas of the island today as well due to bad weather. With the Kiramara Oya, which is a tributary of the Nilwala River, overflowing its banks, several roads were inundated. Other roads were underwater due to the Nilawala River overflowing at Panadugama. Several houses in Tissamaharama were also flooded. Slice gates of all reservoirs apart from Lungam Vehera and Moara reservoirs in the Hambantara district have been opened according to the irrigation department. The Rajangana reservoir of the Anuradhapura district, Ambevela and Kandevela reservoirs of the Badula district and Daduru Oya and Madala reservoirs in the Kurunagala district as well as Tabova reservoir in the Puttaram district are at spill level. 13,135 families in 21 districts have been affected from the 10th of October due to bad weather and 20 houses have been completely destroyed. 1,193 1 houses have been partially damaged. Minister Ranjit Madhum Bandara said that if a disaster situation arises, the ministry has taken steps to phase it. Even now, 25 emergency disaster units have been set up in 25 districts. Compensation during deaths in disasters has been increased from 100,000 to 250,000 rupees. In addition, 2.5 million rupees will be granted for a damaged house or a trade institution. If people become displaced, arrangements have been made at camps for them. Director of the National Disaster Management Services Center, Chaminda Patiraja, said that the government has allocated 3.85 million rupees for affected people in the districts of Gampa, Puttalam, and Colombo. 5.22 million rupees have been granted for housing damage as of now in the districts of Kurunagala, Puttalam, Kaluthara, Matara, Gaul, and Kandy. Meanwhile, there is a possibility of thunder showers occurring during the evening in many areas of the island in the upcoming few days. The meteorology department said that thunder showers could be experienced after 1 p.m. Light rains could occur in the western province, Puttalam, Mana, and Jaffna district coastal areas during the morning hours. Somewhat heavy rainfall can be experienced in the north central, eastern, Uva, southern, Sabaragamu, and central provinces and certain areas of the Vaunia, Kilinochi, and Munatiu districts. Temporary strong winds could occur with thunder showers. The low pressure area has now transformed into a depression and remains in the deep seas off the west of the island and in the weather statement it is said that it is travelling away from the island further. Rain or thunder showers could occur in sea areas around the island here and there even tomorrow. With thunder showers, temporary strong winds could be experienced in sea areas. At the same time, seas could become rough temporarily. The meteorological department requests people to take required steps to minimize accidents due to lightning. The Ministry of Health has taken steps to implement a dengue control program across the island from tomorrow until the 6th of November. It will be carried out under two phases. The highest risk exists in the districts of Colombo, Kalatara, Kandy, Gampaha, Gaul, Matara, Putlam, Ratnapura, Kegol and Jaffna. Since this could spread to other districts as well, mosquito and lava control programs have been organized across the country. The direct intervention of local government institutions are expected for controlling the risk of dengue. The Ministry of Health requests all sectors to provide contributions from state and non-governmental organizations as well as from house owners. Now, the Sri Lanka Catholic Bishops' Conference said that people should be intelligent and courageous in selecting a suitable candidate who can work with concentrating with everybody while dedicating himself to sustainable development. Issuing a statement today, the conference stated this, The expectation of the conference is that the future government, including the president, will manage natural resources on behalf of religious freedom, national security and economic development, and prepare national policies. 
strong steps should be taken to eradicate corruption and irregularities. The Sri Lanka Catholic Bishops Conference requests all Christians and voters in Sri Lanka to vote considering it is a great democratic right at the upcoming election. In the statement issued, it is said that their wish is that the new president and the government which will be elected will guide the country and the people towards actual development. The largest lottery winning generated up to now in the island was won. It was presented by the Development Lottery Board, Kotipati Kapruka. The winning, which exceeded 140 million, was won by a ticket sold in Gudakavela. This is the 12th millionaire awarded this year by the Development Lottery Board. The chairman of the DLP, Sena Surya Pirama, said that by generating the highest number of millionaires within this year, it has been possible to increase the market by 7%. The chairman of the DLP, Sena Surya Pirama, said that Kapruka is a tree that gives everything or a lucky symbol. The winnings were collected for about three years and he said they were able to generate the biggest lottery ticket winner in the country. The significance of this, he said, is that this is the largest winning in history of a lottery. Meanwhile, the Kandy Teaching Hospital has been transformed into a national hospital. Accordingly, the Kandy National Hospital will provide medical facilities covering hospitals in seven provinces of the island. This is the second national hospital in this country. This hospital, which commenced in 1861 as an allergic control hospital, comprises of all facilities as of today. The Kandy National Hospital will treat patients from the central province, north central, Uva, Eastern, Sabargamo and Northwestern provinces. Similarly, the institution training students of the Peradenia University Medical Faculty as well as postgraduate students affiliated to the Columbia University, affiliated medical officers and postgraduate trainings will be trained by the Kandy National Hospital. The Kandy Nurses Training School will also be administrated under this hospital. The first heart transplant in the history of surgery was carried out in the year 2017. A unit for transplanting body parts is also in operation here. Stents required for heart operations are provided free of charge to patients here too. The Kandy National Hospital possesses a heart treatment unit which carries out heart transplants continuously. Also emergency me mental kidney treatment units also exist in this hospital. The chief prelate of the Askeria chapter, Most Venerable Varaka Gurushi Yana Ratana Thera, and Anunayaka of the Malvata chapter, Venerable Nyangoda Vichita Siri Thera, as well as the Mahasanga together with Ministers Raj Rajita Sena Ratna and Lakshman Kiriyalla and the director of the Kandy National Hospital, Dr. Saman Ratnayaka and a group were present on this occasion. The Faculty of Medicine of the University of Colombo is celebrating its 150 year of existence in 2020. It is the second oldest function medical school in Sri Lanka and perhaps in the whole of Asia. In addition, this coincides with the formal launch of modern medical education in Sri Lanka. A key event will be an international medical congress named as the Colombo Medical Congress to be held from the 12th to 15th February 2020. The theme chose is medicine in Sri Lanka, the legacy and the future. This will be followed by a massive public exhibition named Medivision from the 30th March to 5th April 2020. The congress has already attracted many alumni from all over the world to contribute academically and to inspire the future generations of doctors and medical students. Several eminent local and international speakers have agreed to attend the historic occasion. The Colombo Medical Congress will be complete, rather complemented by a presentation of free papers and post presentations by researchers and panel discussions by experts. A medical quiz with participation by several overseas universities will also be conducted. A book launch of publications by the staff and other events are also on the agenda. Now taking a look at the stock update for today, the All Shares Price Index closed at 5,957.27 points, dropping by 6.98 points, and the S&P SL20 Index closed at 2,950.33 points, also dropping by 1.06 points at the end of trading in the Colombo Stock Exchange today. Turnover was over 651 million rupees. Now here is a summary of market details of the Colombo Stock Exchange today.
And that is a wrap of tonight's primetime news. Until we meet again next time, do take care and good night.